I'm in London and I'm seeing Hamilton tonight. Hold me. Recently I went to London to see Hamilton. Um, we also went to the Natural History Museum and saw the Whales Beneath the Surface exhibition. So without further ado, let's roll the vlog and afterwards I will give you some thoughts on Hamilton. Got up at 6am to put false eyelashes on. <laughs> she still can't break a smile. novelty for this family. So story time. We just went to a random cafe thinking that we were just gonna go and get like a toasty or something and um, we just happened to happen upon the most ridiculous um, poshest cafe it looked totally normal from the outside and um, it was right next to our hotel so we just thought yeah this will be great for breakfast and my mum is now mortified <laughs> because they were serving like all sorts like pig's heads and jelly deals and monkfish cheeks there was not one thing on the menu that I would have eaten and um, it was all super expensive I mean I'm sure it was lovely if you like that sort of thing but um, we're just mortified. She insists that everyone was staring at me because I had blue lips when we walked in and that this bit just made it worse because it was full of old ladies that probably, you know, love going to the, uh, the little cafe next to the church for their, uh, their monkfish breakfast. So uh, now we're waiting outside Mackey's um, because that is more of our style. I don't think I've ever mortified my mother more. I was just like, oh yeah, we can just go in here. This looks like a normal cafe. How wrong can you be? London, why are you so posh? I had to say to the man, sorry, the menu's not for us. Poor hipster waiters must have seen us coming as well. They probably saw me and looked at me and were like, it's not for you, love. It's not for you. excited about seeing the whales. Now that we've suitably embarrassed ourselves, let's go see some whales. It's like the shop of your dreams, isn't it? It's suitably impressed. question is, can I contain my excitement that we're walking through the hall that was in Paddington, the movie?
it's life-changing. I never knew I could like John Lawrence so much. The movement choreography, so, 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 so good. I can't even cope. I've never even liked Philip before. The choreography. Also, King George is actually funny, who knew? I've been skipping his songs for like, ever. The choreography. I didn't even know that was possible. I can't even cope with this, I just can't even cope. Look at me. I've got so many thoughts. I can't put them all together. So the first thing I want to say is don't worry about being disappointed if you love the original or you're scared that it won't live up to your expectations because this is an outstanding show. Um, by now you probably know that already from all the reviews and stuff and all the other people that have seen it but I just want to get that out there. So characters, um, I really like the way that most of the characters had a bit of a different feel to the US production or at least what you can hear on the soundtrack and I've seen like little bits of bootlegs, I've never watched a full bootleg. Um, but I've seen clips here and there. The characterization is kind of subtly different from most of the characters and I really liked that and it didn't feel like you were just basically watching a live version of the soundtrack. That wouldn't be that entertaining. It 100% lived up to my expectations which were like through the roof anyway. Um, it's such a good show and even if there's like little bits that you prefer do being done a different way overall you can't be disappointed with the show as a whole because it is just brilliant. I can't really say any more than that, like it's just so good. Um, so individually, like I didn't think anyone could replace Lin-Manuel Miranda as my Hamilton but Jamal is now my Hamilton, like I think I can say that, like Jamal is now my Hamilton. Um, he's just the perfect kind of age, enthusiasm, he had the right temperament for Hamilton, he had the right he, he delivered all his lines with utmost sincerity. I think his voice was actually, you know, a bit better than Lynn's. Sorry, Lynn, I love you. But it's true. Um, and his age just, just really went better. Like, the first half especially, his age was, was perfect. But also, as he got older throughout the show, he, he was just totally convincing that he was maturing and that he was getting older and more worn away with his life um so he was just he was brilliant loved him i also appreciated a lot of the characters that i don't normally like or don't normally like i then like skip their songs I appreciated them like tons more seeing them live and now I appreciate their songs a lot more like I normally skip all of King George um, because I just blah. Now that I've seen live I totally appreciate the comedic value that it has and also I definitely think that our King George is better than Jonathan Groff. Soz. I'm not saying anything that people haven't already said really the fact that he's British just makes more sense. His voice is better, his, his posture is better, his like intonation of, of certain lines and phrases just works and he's so much more believable as a real British monarch and also that man knows how to work an audience he knows how to drag out a joke to the perfect comedic timing he was outstanding I don't normally appreciate like one last time I've, I've normally kind of it's not really my kind of song it's a bit like it's a bit John Legend for me so I normally like skip one last time, but George Washington, oh my gosh, his voice was like pouring honey into your ear. I always think about Obama whenever I'm listening to like George Washington's bits because I feel like they kind of like have like parallels and um, they're quite like similar characters and then it just made me sad because I was thinking about Obama, but like I really liked One Last Time Live. Who else? John Lawrence. I've never really had any feelings for John Lawrence, like he just kind of is there, he's kind of like the third member of the group in my eyes, like Hercules Mulligan and Lafayette are like up there and then John Lawrence is just like this guy that kind of like treads water and now I absolutely love him, he was beautiful, he was so sweet and um, 
Cleve September I now follow on Instagram and he is adorable but also the perfect John Lawrence and the perfect Philip who I also have never had any love for before. Um, I actually didn't realise because John Lawrence on the original soundtrack I don't think he I think he's one of the people who's got like the least distinctive voice so sometimes when it, when he's had a line I used to think that maybe that was Aaron Burr saying that because they've got kind of like moderate smooth voices and um, so I never really appreciated some of the stuff that he does and um, he didn't really have much of a personality for me but in this it really felt like he did and that was just a lot more, it was a lot more touching and moving and their friendship was a lot more like meaningful. Um, so yeah, I now like John Lawrence a lot more. Speaking of Lafayette and Hercules Mulligan, first of all, Hercules Mulligan was, was brilliant. Um, and Lafayette, um, Jason Pennycook, oh my gosh, needs a special mention. Now, I never thought anyone could even come close to David Diggs in my heart as Lafayette, but he really gave it a go. And um, I actually think, like, maybe I still prefer David as Lafayette, but I think I prefer Jason Pennycook as Jefferson because he was outstanding. His physical comedy was just the best thing I've, I've seen in a long time. He, he actually, like, managed to catch the audience by surprise so many times that people were, like, belly laughing at the, the stuff that he was doing or saying. He just he had some great comedic timing and excellent physical comedy. I can't I can't rave enough about him. And he delivered my favourite line in the whole show with such perfection. Oh, my favourite line is where uh, Lafayette goes, "You are the worst, but I underestimated how funny this show actually is because people were like laughing out loud at a lot of things that. You'd think that if you know the soundtrack off by heart like I do, you wouldn't find them that funny because you know the joke's coming. But I had underestimated how much the physical element adds to the comedic value of those lines. What else? What else? What else? So the ladies were a bit more harder to kind of decide how I feel about. So their voices were all incredible. Um, Angelica sounded like, oh my gosh, she was amazing like she sounded like you were just listening to a cd it was unbelievable how beautiful her voice sounded it just felt like an angel had descended from heaven when she was singing for the majority of the time um in fact for like all of it so she's just she was incredible and i liked her characterization of angelica for the most part however because i haven't seen the u.s production i don't know if this is like canon for all of them or if it's just this one, the way they've decided to direct it. But I feel like there was just a few too many like longing glances at Hamilton after the fact, like after she's decided, right, I'm gonna like let this one go and, and move on with my life. She just felt a little bit like puppy dog eyes at Hamilton a few too many times. And I just feel like my Angelica isn't, um, that's not how I imagined her maybe listening to the soundtrack. Maybe that's always been there, but or maybe it was a directorial choice, so it's probably not her fault if if so anyway. But I just felt like we didn't need that. Like we know that she had this longing for Hamilton, but I liked the fact that she kept it hidden and that she also was like mature enough and smart enough to just like move on with it. And in the when I'm listening to the original, that's how I see it as like she has that one moment and it's in, it's in the middle of Satisfied when she has that. But after that, she doesn't like moon over him. She's, she's done. When she comes back and she goes, I'm not here for you. It should be so obvious that she's not here for him to everybody in the audience. And it felt a little bit like, mm, well, she might be here for him because she's been looking at him longingly every, in every scene that they've been in together. And I felt like they, they should maximize on the intellectual equals, but, I didn't need her to be as quite as moony as as it felt and I don't know if I was just over analyzing it because Angelica is my favorite character in the whole show so I was probably like watching her a lot more than everybody else. Uh, Eliza again like I liked her more in the second half when she was more mature and like, Burn was so beautiful. In Helpless I felt like she was a little bit like Disney princessified like she was a bit too sweet and a bit like facial expression seemed a bit ah, there was like a lot of head like going on and I was just a bit like oh, okay but I mean I can't fault her performance and her ability 
because it was stunning but maybe the way it was directed might have been a little bit I don't know if they were just unsure that the UK audience would all be so familiar with the story so they had to like over egg some of the some of the moments and personality traits that had to show they had to like overdo them to make sure the audience got that nuance of the story because obviously everything happens so fast in Hamilton and there's a lot of plot to get through they've got to be like really like no like let's remind you that Angelica fancies Hamilton a bit or like I don't know it's eh, eh. they didn't they didn't really do that for anyone else so I just felt like the ladies got a little bit of a short straw there Eliza at the end um when she says about the orphanage I did I did get like a single tear but I, I didn't quite feel the same amount of gravitas I need gravitas from Eliza Mariah Reynolds right oh my gosh um what's her name Christina Lando oh she is so beautiful that she is the vision of my Mariah Reynolds but the way that the music was sung, I'm not like a musician so I, I don't really know what the terminology would be for it but it just felt like it had a different tone or it was like sung in a different octave or something if that's a thing. I don't know it just didn't feel like the same which was a bit sad but I liked the way she acted Peggy and I liked the way she acted Mariah and I loved the contrast between the two like as soon as she had that red lippy on she was a temptress. I don't think I've talked about Burr yet but um, he was probably like characterised the most different to the soundtrack version um, and his voice, well his voice was probably the most different to the soundtrack version and, but he still absolutely nailed um, Wait For It and the rumour it happens and like his like big numbers. He really suited that part and I, I appreciated his performance. Bad stuff keeps happening to him and it's just so unfortunate. He's just like a really unlucky guy. It, and I appreciated how how much that one in particular was different to the original and how people could have reacted negatively to it. It was a big gamble but he was amazing. Like I, I thought he was great. Really appreciated like where the ensemble do like a minor character like Charles Lee was the perfect epitome of like a privileged white kid that's been given a commission that he doesn't deserve. He was excellent. The movement choreography was on point. I can't really compare it to anything else that I've seen. The ensemble were so integral to the main show and I was really glad that they did the bows like en masse at the end because I think without that ensemble the show just wouldn't have the same impact. Also I want all of the ensemble costumes, the corsets, the jodhpurs, the boots and the braids and the mohawks. Oh god. Oh my gosh, the coats. The coat, the costuming generally was just mwah. I love the rewind choreo in Satisfied, in the beginning of Satisfied, that was beautiful. Take the bullets out your gun, what? That scene always gets you, doesn't it? Yorktown just always gets you. Excellent use of Revolve in so many of the songs, but um, my favourite was It's Quiet Uptown because you just had Angelica's beautiful voice just like taking you away to this like alternate reality and then you had this like slow motion choreography that was partly on the revolve partly off that was really stunning that was a gorgeous sequence so my camera cut out just before i could finish so um yeah um the other bit of choreography in the reynolds pamphlet um firstly when queen george kind of just like queen george kind of just like waltzes over and is like flips his paper at hamilton i thought that was brilliant and um also the bit where they're all like have you read this and then they just like hand one of the sheets to the conductor so that you just see this hand come out of the orchestra pit I love a good break of the fourth wall i think that's everything i had to say if there's anything that i missed because i carried on talking for a bit after my camera cut out there might be a couple of things that i've missed um but i i can't think what they were the takeaway message was really just um it totally lives up to expectations it's different but that's a good thing because who wants to just see a repeat of a soundtrack that you've already got in your car? Let me know what your thoughts on Hamilton were because I need to discuss it with people who have actually seen it. Did you agree with anything that I said? Did you have a different take on it? Please tell me. I need to know. Comments below. See you humans. Yeah, great idea to do that with blue lipstick on. And she was like, wow, as if she'd like never been to a ball before. And I was just a bit like, that's not very realistic, is it?